here's the problem, right? Composing things, it's it's hard. You have to use creativity. You've got to use your brain. Why not make computers do it for you? Let me make it so that the music will randomly mutate, which will auto-generate new music. Around this line or something, let's add a new uh, input. Randomly mutate button. All right, yeah, so these two lines look good, I think. All right, add the mutate case to the input change. Might as well make that a property of piano rolls. Then I just need to add the mutate on property. Mutate on is gonna initialize as false. So I think the way that I want this to work is that when we reach the end of a bar and start a new one, the piano roll could just randomly change somewhere. So how do we know if we're at the end of a bar? Well, I think that's in the roll updater. We check the bar counter. I guess it would be here, right? We just do a check if the div index is equal to the number of divisions, minus one. Now it could just change the internal data, but the problem with that is that it's not going to actually update the screen. So why not just literally call the function that I call here, right? Why not just call select piano square? All right, you know what? Can I just like functionize these two parts? I think just taking this out might make this easier. So just these three lines, I'm gonna put them in a function called empty to filled. Instead of setting bounds uh, internally, why not have the bounds be what you see on the screen and then it selects a cell randomly? So yeah, let's just select a random row, multiply that by P table, and to get the index, I'm gonna floor that. That's a random row. And then a random column would be, again, we floor a randomly selected cell except for the fact that we only want to go up to 16 and there's 17 there minus one from the length when multiplying it then add it back so now i have a random row and a random column all right there there's a random cell we need to give it the rand row and the rand call oh there it goes Ooh, it does work. Okay, what? I don't remember making this synth. Why are they all so low? What? How did this happen? It's not filling it in correctly in the data. That That's probably what's going on. Okay, yeah, I'm sending in a value 46 normally. So I'm adding the offset before, before putting it in. And I didn't do that down here. So new variable O for offset. And then I can just add that to each of these. Ooh, I hear it now. That piece of music was beautiful and I can never compete. That being said, one might find it preferable to put a few restrictions on what notes are allowed to be generated. You could have a drop down for key, but why put an extra work to sacrifice customizability when I could just make 12 different checkboxes and let the users pick which notes they want. Just copy this line like 12 times. MNB for mutate note B, mutate note C. Okay, so yeah, let's go make the mutate notes back in the, the roll object. Let's initially set each of these to true. Don't forget to save this dot. This doesn't actually do anything yet other than just like let you change the values and then like duplicate that like four more times. Those are all our sharps. That like is approximately what a keyboard looks like. Generating random numbers over a range with gaps in it is actually really annoying. I guess my thought here is I wanna look at each row that we could potentially pick to drop a note into and check to see if it's valid and then make an array from those that are valid and then pick a row from that array. Oh my God, this is so complicated. So this is going from the low bound to the high bound and I guess whatever J is, we modulate it by 12. So I, I need to know, is this value valid? And if it is, then I can add J to an array. Like the rand range, because I guess it's the range of numbers that we're gonna pick, uh, is just an empty array. And assuming that everything goes well, we would just be adding J to that range of random numbers that we're picking. That is the, the row that we're currently on. 
but we only do that if it's valid. So um, I guess I'll just throw this into a function called is mutate note true, and then just uh, give it mod j. And yeah, if it is on, if it is true, then we're gonna push our range. So I guess I just have to make this function now. So I mean, we'd eventually be returning the piano rolls i dot mutate notes, and then we just give it the note name because we already modded it. It should just be this array. So it's just no order of n. And then if we throw note name into here, it will be able to give us whether that's true or false. And then instead of generating on the rows, we generate on the range. So we generate up to the rand range dot length. This is rand row range index. Oh, that's, that's confusing. If we want to get the rand row, we then have to go into the rand range array and use the rand row range index. It's generating things that are not in the range that I just said. Oh, because I put a semicolon after the if statement. Right. Why is that even allowed? Ugh. It, it's not working, it's not doing what I want it to do, but it, it kind of is because like it's clearly not hitting some notes now. Why is it setting black notes? It's inverted is the issue because we're going from top to bottom in the table and bottom to top in the indices. This is hurting my brain as to like how to actually massage the data into like something acceptable. So actually I think this is what I want when selecting the row because that's that inverts my selection. I think I might have gotten this better now. Is that actually accurate? Um, and no, if I click it, it doesn't disappear. The notes that I'm clicking on right now are not actually the notes that I'm putting in on the table. Yeah, it's just wrong. It's probably hitting this one right here. It's putting them in upside down. The display is correct, but the internal representation and what's actually being played is still wrong. I just want to use the rand row because that's the data row. Now, does my thing match the noise that it made? No, it doesn't. Why is it still inverted? Because square empty to fill also sets the data. And I guess the data is being set differently from what I want it to be. What the? So this actually, I think, should just be rand row. Either way, I, I shouldn't use the inverted, I don't think. I think I should just use rand row. I think this should, this will work. Okay, actually, actually it is functioning now. Oh, okay, yeah, no, actually it, it is working. You know, I really should maybe try and get this save and load feature working again. Uh, just not today, not not now. Instead, why not make it so you can adjust the frequency of random events? So there are two things I wanna do. One of them is making it so that a mutate event may or may not occur randomly. And the other is making it so that you can have more than one mutation per measure. For a mutate probability, I guess I'd make it between zero and 100% chance of something mutating. And then mutation per measure can just be a number. Set the min to zero, the max to 100. So I'll have to make a property for the mutate probability. And the other is MPM, and that's the mutates per measure. Set the default to 100 and mutates per measure to one. All right, so just like chuck this in a for loop. All right, maybe, maybe I should just move this, all this code to a, a function called mutate. So with this for loop, we now mutate the number of times that the user is set, but also we want to make those mutations random. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay, that's functioning. Okay, I hate it already. Huh. 
I wonder what happens if I turn the mutations up to like a hundred and maybe like make the BPM like a little bit faster too. Yeah, it kind of ceases to be random when like it's pressing every single note, huh? hurt a little bit. Should I do save and load yet? Okay, this is someone's code on uh, Stack Overflow. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, look at that. File dialog. Alright, thanks Hans. Apparently he's a necromancer. And um, I already have a load file dialog that I did for 3D, so how did I how did I end up doing that? Uh, okay, there's a specific kind of input for that, I guess. Right, so just copy this load model function from my other code. This one's uh, even simpler than the save txt to file. I don't know why saving is harder than loading, but okay. So save and load buttons are back. My save instrument data is actually pretty simple. So I could just use this function again and then give it the save string. And then that should save it as a JSON. The new stuff is just the sample data and the sample start. So then I can just load instrument data with the file contents. Let's save the file. I've got the instrument data file and it's in a JSON file. It can't read the property of cells for restoring the piano square. Well, I guess I've got to fix the load function, but the save function works now at least. It might remember, but it probably won't populate any of the data. Well, if I do select randomly mutate, yeah, it doesn't remember. All right, so populate them like that. This is in the wrong spot. I need to wait till after I add the actual roll. There. Okay. Yeah. It, it, okay. It updated. Three, three. Great. And uh, they're all unchecked. Oh my god. F you. What did I do wrong? Okay. Mutate notes apparently doesn't exist. Is it in the actual data? Uh, yes. It's but it's saving a completely empty array. What if I were to call stringify specifically on piano rolls zero dot mutate notes? It's freaking blank. Why? JSON array data type cannot have named keys on an array. If you want named properties, use an object, not an array. Fine, I will make a new object. All right, great, now it's a property. Okay, refresh, load, does it remember? Oh, it does, okay. Oh, I got some more. Put the clear button in the proper place, why? All right, so let's just make another function in the role object. Update clear button position, and then just run this code. And that shouldn't have any problems, hopefully. It's not a function. What do you mean it's not a function? Yes, it is, F you. The problem is that I have functions within the role object. The modified divs here, uh, and the update clear button position. I gotta, I gotta get rid of these. And then right here, do a new function called initialize. Well, now I have a function that will initialize the functions. So after you initially create the role object, just make sure you initialize those role functions. And then when loading the instrument data, declare those functions. Yeah, it looks like the clear button's in the right place now. This is the code that sets the button to say play. I'll grab that, make it a new function. So when you load the instrument data down here in the wave element selector, if the samp data ij value length is greater than zero, and now it should be able to tell the difference between a recorded sample and an unrecorded one, right? So now the file should be much bigger. Samples are enormous. And now I hit play over here. Ooh, ooh, I hear my sample. Great. I think with that, I have everything. So yay, saving and loading is now working again. As a brief side note, I also want to show off this other implementation I did in Java over five years ago, uh, which is what initially I was trying to recreate um, in JavaScript with this series. It definitely lacks a lot of the features that I have this time, um, and there's no actual user interface. So values are hard coded in, but I think the randomizer works a little bit better
I guess what I like about this implementation is it's kind of like procedurally generated minimalism. Like if Philip Glass or Steve Reich made bit music. Oh, I just realized what my other program was doing differently. The reason why everything is ending up being crowded here is because I'm putting a note on every single column, essentially. But the uh, the Java program was replacing it, so if you had one that was down here, you know, these other ones would drop out. So in the case where we do empty to filled, we have to clear all other cells in that column. Through some kind of math, I think this should work now. This will change it so everything with a given column will disappear. So chords are no longer possible. I want rand range of j, not j itself. Yeah, because I was getting the index and not the actual index. Wait, what? Whatever. It should work now, I think. It's, it's almost discernible what's happening. What I also noticed now is that you're much more likely to add a note than delete one. And I want to try and maybe make those proportional to each other. Yeah, I'm just going to make it, there's a 50% chance that it's add and 50% chance that it's delete. And like, that's another variable that I could like have it configure. This is the add delete proportion. If it's 100, it should always add. And if it's zero, it should always delete. So I have the equality operator going the wrong way. If I set this to zero, will it delete all the notes rather than adding them? Let's, let's find out. A little bit too fast. Oh, add delete proportion is not defined. It's piano rolls, instrument index, dot add delete proportion. Okay, yeah, no, I think this works now, and this sounds great. I mean, this sounds... I mean, honestly, why do we need a human anymore? Computers are just as good. <laughs>